Yo, what's poppin' with it, y'all? You know what it is. Back for another edition of Gen Sports Corner. Back at you for October 27, 2022. Before we get into the video, like, subscribe, click the notification bell so you know every time I'm dropping a vid. With no further ado, you see it. Read the title, Howie Roseman Stripes Again, Ski Mask Season. And uh, look, we just got Robert Quinn for a fourth round pick from the Chicago Bears. They waived one Mr. Teron Jackson, six round pick from last year in the 2021 draft. And you replaced him with Robert Quinn on might i add a prorated minimum salary because the bears and that was an update yesterday they are picking up the majority of his salary for 2022 which is crazy which is almost like eight almost eight million dollars now so they're getting them at a discounted price for a low round uh a late late fourth round pick because we're going to be good this year obviously and then you look at all the depth we have on this team you look at Hassan Reddick, one of the best pass rushers in football. You have Josh Sweat on the other side from him. You have Brandon Graham. And now with the injury of Derek Barnett, you replace Derek Barnett with a player that is, I think, going to be more productive in Robert Quinn. Now, obviously, let's look at the scenario here because everything is not what it seems on the surface. Robert Quinn, he was going to get traded. He was a, a very likely traded, uh, candidate to get traded this year. Because the Bears, they're rebuilding, and they're just not a good team. They're, they're young. They're trying to get uh, draft picks. So you look at last year, Robert Quinn logged 18 and a half sacks. Yeah, you heard that correctly. 18 and a half sacks and four forced fumbles. However, this year, guess how many sacks he has? One. Uno. <laughs> not, not many, okay? In seven games. But that doesn't tell the whole story, right? Because if you look deeper into the stats... You look at the productiveness that he's bought this year and why his sack rate and production rate is so low. Now, there are other reasons for it. Is he getting older? Sure. Could it be a drop in production that may be age-related? Maybe. However, um, this is a very good chart here. You can check it out uh, at Seth Walder on Twitter. He has this chart uh, for pass rushing rates at edge, 2022. And on the y-axis, you have the pass rush win rate, as you can see on the screen here. And then on the x-axis, you have the double team rate. So the amount that a pass rusher is winning on average, and then the amount that they're getting double teamed in relation to that. And you look at this Eagles team, right? This year, we are 12th in sack rate, 11th in football outsiders adjusted sack rate. Okay, that's been good, but you can always get better, right? Now, that's only through six games as other teams have played seven games. So, you know, the stats are a little bit skewed by a week or so right now. But still, there's room for improvement, right? So you have this rotation of guys, including J Josh Sweat, who you can see on the screen here. He is fourth, tied for fourth in pass rush win rate behind Micah Parsons, Miles Garrett, Bradley Chubb, and he's tied with Trey Hendrickson from the Bengals. And then... Not far below that is Mr. Hassan Reddick. You can see all the way on the left. A very nice pass rush win rate in comparison to his peers. However, you can see Hassan Reddick does not get many double teams. Josh Sweat, he gets an average amount of double teams. But you look all the way to the right. Okay? And you'll see some, some names like Michael Parsons, Miles Garrett, Demarcus Lawrence, Nick Bosa. And then who's that? Who's that over here on the right? Robert Quinn, he, he's been getting double teamed a lot, even on run plays. And there's been many examples of this. I was looking at a video clip. I believe one was against the Packers. And there are a couple other clips where he's getting chipped by tight ends. He's getting chipped by running backs. He's getting double teamed consistently and relentlessly because Khalil Mack is not there this year. Last year when Khalil Mack was there, he was getting one-on-ones. And as I said before, that's a big reason why he got 18 and a half sacks because he's quick around the edge. He still has that bend that a lot of the elite pass rushers have. And I still think he has that right now, but he hasn't had the one-on-one -on -one matchups, which he will start getting now that he's over with the Eagles because you have so many guys in that defensive line rotation. Like I said, are you going to double team Robert Quinn and then give Josh Sweat a one-on-one? -on -one? Okay, bro. Or give Hassan Raker a one-on-one? You don't want to do that. Or give Fletcher Cox or Hargrave 
of one on one. You don't want to do that. So do I think that he's going to be like have like a Khalil Mack impact? No. But I get and tell me tell me if I'm wrong. I get Chris Long vibes from this trade here. I think that he's going to be a menace for two reasons. One, like I said, I think he still has that elite speed and bend off the edge. And then two, his snap count is going to be limited. So, And I think you're going to see him be put more into second and third down situations. And the same thing with Hassan Reddick. You're going to be able to see Hassan Reddick be able to be on there in second and third down, not be asked to be a stalwart in the run game as much. I think that's what you're going to have Brandon Graham for. And, and Jordan Davis, okay? So I think you're going to have more one-on-one pass rush opportunities for Josh Sweat, Hassan Reddick, and one Mr. Robert Quinn. And I think this is a huge move, a huge move, and it's going to pay off for a team that's already stacked on the defensive side of the, the field. So let me know what you guys think about the trade. Um, he has two more years on his deal for 2023, 13.9 million in 2024, 12.9 million, but neither one of those years is guaranteed and I think that if he doesn't live up to expectations, he'll be going next year. If he does live up to expectations, he'll either get a restructured contract or he'll get traded like Michael Bennett did a few years ago. So, you look at the type of moves that the Eagles have made that have been similar to this, they've hit more than they've missed. Yeah, you missed on the Ryan Kerrigan move, but you hit on the Michael Bennett move, you hit on the Chris Long move, you know, you hit on the Jay Ajayi move, right? Getting these low risk, high reward type of trades or free agent signers or what have you. So great move by Harry Roseman. And in the next video, I'll be talking about some of the trade rumors that are going on still right now with the trade deadline coming up in week eight, because there's a lot of buzz about a certain few players. Okay. So let me know what you guys think and I'll be back at you in the next one. Peace.